Hey, Riddle here. So it's been about three months and we moved to a new property and it's amazing. It's basically everything we wanted and couldn't afford uh, six or seven years ago. So that was a great manifestation. I want to show you what was here and also what I've already put in just the last three months. I spent the entire day yesterday with a young man uh, starting to move the smaller trees and the trees that weren't happy on the other property because there was uh, too many trees, redwoods, and it was a little too cold there. And the soil um, is awful. It's on a heavy clay deposit. So every it's kind of worked out to my advantage because I was planting trees there the last seven years. And almost every tree that I planted stayed in this little tiny bowl without too many tap roots going out. So fingers crossed, because I don't know if you've seen the price and quality of fruit trees recently at the garden centers, but a, a horrific check on both the quality and the price of what they have out there in the way of fruit trees right now, unless you can afford to get them from a small reliable grower on Etsy or eBay. I've had some good luck with Etsy. Yeah, pretty good luck. Okay, so I'm gonna get to the uh, what we got going on. Now, they say when you move on to a new piece of land, and the goal here is to be eventually uh, completely self-sufficient and have a food forest. One of the things that I'm planning for is the inevitable that's happening. And I really saw it this year in um, a pretty obvious way. And that is uh, things heating up faster than we're expecting. So my strategy is, though we are considered a zone, yeah, zone eight to 10, I'm planning 10, 11. I'm just going for some tropical, uh, more tropical species. And if it gets a little cold here, I'll just protect them because I think uh, I saw magnolias blooming two to three months early this year. Uh, my narcissus bloomed in late December and I also had miner's lettuce that was two months ahead of a time and other things. Everything's, I would say conservatively where we live, spring is a month and a half early this year, conservatively, maybe even more, a month and a half. But let's get to the fun stuff. I'm just telling you my strategy for the future. So because we've only been here, not even a, a, a half a year yet, I am uncertain what these trees are. They're either pears or apples, old pear or apple trees. But we have four small ones in the front that I've already had pruned. And then we have a big old apple tree over there that they had a little tree for it in, which produces really delicious little apples, considering it's been completely neglected. And you know, uh, wild apples are delicious. And you can also use them to make homemade vinegar and other things. There's another fruit tree, but I think that's technically on the neighbor's property, but I don't think they care. I did some bamboo along here and I don't think I'm gonna regret it. I'm trying to kind of make a barrier between me and I haven't even met them, but my neighbors are in construction, you can see, and they've got a lot of chickens. So I think good fences will make good neighbors in this circumstance. Here's another small pear or apple tree, uncertain. Another small pear or apple tree. Over there in the distance is another small pear or apple tree. And there was willow all along the bottom of the property. Bushes and bushes and bushes of willow. I thought it was just scrap willow and then all of a sudden it budded about two weeks ago and it's pussy willow. I have thousands and thousands of branches of pussy willow which actually can be set in, um, cut and sold to florists also makes a really nice gift spring gift to neighbors and friends along the fence over there i just started playing i put some goji berries to see how they'll do then we have this whole length of the fence here mostly weeds right now but Detura, 
prickly pear, prickly pear, prickly pear, prickly pear. Cold hardy kiwi vines. Goji berry. You know something that, uh, dragon fruit. Banana, goji berry, banana, goji berry, banana, goji berry, banana, goji berry, banana, 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 banana. Olive tree. These are green olives. And I actually did olives for the first year, the first time this year, and they turned out incredible. Kalamati. Then there's another small fruit tree hiding in the corner back there that I don't know what it is. This is an old apple tree, but it's still still doing its thing. It's still making apples. Then along the fence here, I just started putting in some different things. I did a little Asian honeysuckle because I like collecting the flowers and the tea from the flowers is really medicinal. It tastes delicious. It's basically poor man's jasmine and it's very anti-inflammatory. And that's... Um, Chinese medicine. I should probably climb up here. But I have three blueberry bushes planted. I have a ton, uh, at least 14 of the hardy kiwi that I did from cuttings from my vine on the other property. I also have goji berries up here. And I'm going to be putting in along the fence all over the place too, um, five different colors uh, five different types of uh, passion fruit vines, which is exciting. This is my grape arbor. It has two types of grapes that produced pretty heavily last year. I think it was a Thompson seedless and a white uh, champagne grape. Now you'll have to excuse me. I keep going to the point of telling you we haven't been here full year. So many of these fruit trees are past their prime, but still producing fruit. And I don't know what a lot of them are, but let's start in the front row here. Finger alarm. Variegated pink lemon tree. It's a peach of some sort. A white peach. That's either a white peach or a nectarine. Chinese mulberry, Chinese mulberry, fig. I believe this is going to be an apricot. This may be an apricot also. These are incredible pear trees. Uh, there's one is a Chinese species with this brown kind of thick skin and the other one is this really sweet golden colored pear. Now these are covered with lichen, which tells you your air is really healthy to breathe, but the lichen isn't the most healthy thing uh, to be covering your fruit trees with. So I just sprayed these down with a pretty heavy um, coat of copper sulfate because I read that helps and we will see. I think this is a plum. I think uh, I read it was, um, oh, what's it called? The tag was, oh, it's still here. Look it. So this is what you have to be careful of. They never took the tags off and it, instead of it just completely strangling and killing the tree, it literally grew into it, but it's a beauty plum. Sweet, flavorful, wildly adaptive, some um, pollinates well with the Santa Rosa. <laughs> this, I think, is an apple of some sort. I just planted this. This was some delicious plum that we were eating five or six years ago that we grew from a pit. Again, really old pear or apple. This is our orange tree, which needs a lot of love. Um, so all of these older trees, it's this dry root orchard, which means I don't think he ever put a spot of fertilizer or water or pesticide in any of these. Lemon tree. Again, it's interesting she has so much yellowing because I did treat the soil, but I guess it just takes a while for the tree to take it in because usually all that yellowing is a, a iron deficiency. 
uncertain what this little beauty is. Uncertain what this. Again, the bark looks really similar to, I'm guessing that this is gonna be, if it's still alive, I'm guessing it's gonna be a um, apricot. Here's some sort of fig that they planted. She's still a little, little thing. Uh, this is another apple or pear. Pomegranate, dwarf nectarine, another type of fig. This is, um, this is the type of lime that you use more for the leaves that they use in Asian cooking. Um, the name is escaping me right now. The fruit's really bitter though and, and kind of unexceptional, but somebody gave me the tree, so I put it in. This is another really old pear or apple. Pear, apple, pear, apple, pear, apple, pear, apple. This is a wonderful, uh, somewhat rare heirloom apple called a cinnamon apple. And it literally has like a little aftertaste of cinnamon and it makes a nice little small to medium sized red apple. Again, a really old either apple or pear. Apple or pear. Apple or pear. We'll know in the next three months. Boy, look how old this one is. So that's why I'm planting some of the trees so close to these because obviously a lot of these should be taken out or they're not gonna take up enough light or space to worry about planting the other trees close to them. But the, they got termites growing in here and eating them, but they're still trying to bud. Oh, this is wonderful. This is a uh, pineapple guava and that little bush over there I just transplanted from the other property. It just didn't do well because of the lack of sun and the microclimate. So we'll see how they do here. Um, that's also a pineapple guava. They're so good. You eat them skin and all. They're kind of the cross between a strawberry and a kiwi. Uh, this little plum is this crazy little plum that grows all over the place in the mountains here. And it makes these crazy delicious uh, small uh, egg size, egg shaped plums. I've seen something really similar in France and there's a purple one and I have a golden one. Pomegranate, which was just transplanted. Again, this was on the other property in bad soil and, and, and bad conditions for probably six years now. And every year it grew meagerly and it would bud, it would flower and then all the flowers fall off. Chocolate sapote. Chocolate sapote. So the guavas, they're cold hardy. There's other people growing them here successfully and have been for years. The chocolate sapote are an experiment to see uh, how they will hold up as a tropical tree here. You could tell this one got um, frostbitten. I was being so careful. I let my guard down just one time and it got frostbitten, but it'll come back. It's another pomegranate. Finger lime, finger lime, finger lime, or caviar lime. Asian pear. This is a yellow plum. Another crazy like local tree. It does really well here in this climate. See the pussy willows in the background? I need to get out here and just cut a bunch and dry them. They're so, so cool. Not sure if that's focusing, hope it is. Ah. Uh, this is a damson, dams, damson plum. It was pretty mature, but I had moved it last year when we made our house a little bigger. It was too close to the house. So I'm hoping the roots weren't too developed and it's going to once again, accept being transplanted again and it'll fill in and mature and someday give me fruit. Oh, look at this sad avocado. This is the weird thing. I didn't dig this out of the ground. I had it in the pot. But um, I was trying to break the roots up because you never want to put your roots in a ball mass when they've been kept in a pot for too long. And I, I thought I was gentle enough, but it took a really hard shock. So I need to yank all those leaves off and give it a trim. This is, oh, these are really underrated. 
and a lot of people have just kind of forgotten about them, is a huckleberry. And huckleberry trees, huckleberry bushes are really easy to grow, um, not prone to many diseases. They make a beautiful spring flower and then a delicious berry and then change colors and do a beautiful fall thing. And then over and over again, get bigger and bigger. The thing about the huckleberry, the birds are crazy for them. So you definitely have to get a lot of netting around them if your goal is to have some huckleberries. I also planted three more baby huckleberries way over there against that fence. So she will have something to pollinate with. Here's another pear apple, another pear apple. This is a car car orange. And they're fussy as hell, and we had it growing on the property. I told you that it doesn't have the sunlight that was fighting with the redwood trees. And every year she tries so hard, but the fact is it just wasn't gonna happen. So yesterday we tried our best to dig her up as lovingly as possible, brought her over and got her transplanted, but you can see she took a hard shock. I need to get in here and take off the flowers she's trying to make and take off the fruit, trim her back aggressively so she can put all her energy into her roots. Uh, the one thing you want to do when you're transplanting bushes and trees is buy a bottle of liquid B1. They sell it for about 12 bucks, maybe cheaper where you live at Home Depot. Uh, one tablespoon per gallon and when you water in your tree or bush or whatever after getting it in the ground uh, water in with V1 Upstart and it helps the plant to focus on root growth instead of stem and leaf growth. And it can, um, it can really exponentially guarantee success with transplanting, I'd say by 30 or 40 percent. Got a little Indo -mander -qua Mandarin quat. So it's a type of kumquat that I'm guessing is gonna, it's more, uh, it's a combination of round and elongated and should be super tasty. This is another little dwarf Chinese mulberry. Another, oh, I don't know what this is. Almost looks like a cherry from the bark, but we'll see. Again, I didn't plant it, but I pruned it and I don't know, she doesn't look, can't tell what she's doing. We'll see, see here in a couple months when we revisit all this in bloom. Uh, this is a Persian lime, uh, old pear apple. This is a, a delicious kumquat, seedless kumquat. We also have one in the greenhouse that I haven't put in the ground yet. I love kumquats. Uh, eat them skin and all. They make a wonderful compote for seafood and fish. Well, seafood is fish, but... <laughs> uh, what is this one? Mm, I can't remember. Some kind of apple. Must be some kind of... Oh, no, no, no. This was... This was different. This was an Italian prune. So I have no idea. It was on the other property. It was really unhappy. We'll see what happens if we get any flowers or fruit from it this year. And there's a lot of prunes in the uh, the adjacent uh, farm, adjacent orchard to pollinate this. And they also have bees. Looks like they've got hundreds of uh, beehives over there, which I am definitely gonna benefit from. This is, what is this? <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> oh, shoot. Well, it's a fruit tree. It's a fruit tree. It's growing really straight up and down. Yeah, see if it'll come to me in a minute. I can't remember. Finger lime. Finger lime. Finger lime. Avocado. This we didn't plant, but it looks like a beautiful little, I'm guessing it's a mandarin and it's covered with flowers. So when you have something this tiny and it's trying to produce this much fruit, it's probably best to remove all the flowers and just let it focus on growing. You know, let it focus on doing its thing, getting a stronger root system and getting stronger branches. 
uh, looks like it split. It got so heavy, it got mashed down somehow. I'm gonna have to get that closed up. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let it, the flowers open and they're gonna smell amazing. And I'm going to take them all and I'm going to infuse them in honey. And then I'll have basically orange blossom honey. And it smells and tastes delicious. So we're not gonna let these flowers go to waste. We're just gonna do what's best for the plant. Over here, we have an incredible seedless mandarin of some sort. We didn't plant that. This is another type of olive. I'm not sure what it is. I have to look it up. So this is our third olive tree. Here's another mandarin. Jujube. Yeah, there is such thing as a jujube. It's a Chinese fruit. They taste like dates. Uh, this is a Turkish fig. Then there's two more old apple pears back here. So our guess is that when this was all like orchard, it was all orchard, hundreds and hundreds of acres. And then slowly, the whoever the family was of the farm was, they started selling off acreage for people to build houses. And these people bought three acres and just fenced it in. But the, the fruit trees were here and they just left them here. This is a big old apple tree that's still producing apples that I need to get in here and do some more pruning. Uh, the apple branches are really pliable so they can make some beautiful wreaths, make some extra money off of that. Back there along the fence, like I said before, there are three more, uh, three more, um, of the berries that were over there, three more huckleberries. Here's another tree. I'm not sure what it is. It's an old pear or apple. This is a wonderful white peach tree that we grew from a pit. And it actually produced several peaches last year and they were delicious. And I didn't think it worked that way, but we lucked out. Another old pear. These are persimmon trees. There's two of them. They produced heavily last year. They were delicious. I dried them. I turned them into jams. We had such a good time with those. There's another old apple or something. I'm guessing this is an old apple tree too. I'm not sure what this little thing is they planted. Can't tell yet. Again, right now I'll plant all around these because I still have a lot to move from the old house. Another old apple pear. So I took rough inventory really rough inventory of what was here and what I've already planted. And we comfortably have over probably 105 different uh, fruit and berry bushes at this point and trees. And I still have a lot of stuff to move. So I think when it's all done and over with, we're gonna be starting out with probably somewhere around at least 140, 140 different fruit trees, bushes, and vines for our food forest, which is a dream. Got the raised beds going, got these spring greens coming up. I gotta get some wire over this because my cat has decided that this is going to be his litter box. And that just disgusts me because <laughs> he gets, keeps taking giant turds out here. All right, well, that's it. I kind of made this video more for my friends and my viewers just to show them everything that has been, everything that was here and everything that's been accomplished in the three or so months that I've been here. And uh, it's just so exciting. What a dream. It's a dream to live somewhere that the sound of birds is more prominent than the sound of humans. <laughs>